Hi everyone, this is Ryan Corcoran with Broadcast Buddy TV, the all-around go-to channel for all things broadcast television. We're here on the channel, it is our goal to equip you with the tips, tricks, and know-hows to help make you a better broadcaster. So, if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing, hit that bell icon so you never miss an upload. That being said, let's get started. So, today I wanted to show you guys how to essentially add VU meters to your Carbonate Ultra and Graphite Production Switcher multi-viewers. So this was actually an idea I had quite some time ago, maybe last summer, and I just never really got around to it. But with Ross Video's recent announcement and release of version four for Carbonite Ultra, which will give you the ability to add the Rave audio engine to your production switcher, now seemed like better time than any. So the Graphite production switcher, Ross Video's all-in-one unit, actually was able to do this from day one. So. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go through this process and I'm gonna give you everything you need to know in order to do this on your own. So let's get to it. Okay, so let's start with some prerequisites. First of all, like I mentioned before, the Graphite on the one production switcher should be able to do this out of the box, no additional equipment necessary. However, if you plan on using the Graphite's HDMI input or you plan on using this technique on more than one multi-viewer, you will need additional gear. Now, switching over to the Carbonite Ultra, there are a few things that you're gonna need. First and foremost is gonna be the optional Rave Audio Engine license. Keep in mind, at the time of the recording of this video, this is a paid option. The second thing you'll need is some sort of computer running Windows, Mac, or Linux operating system with Ross Video's dashboard downloaded. Dashboard is Ross Video's free to use, free to download control software that you can get directly off of their website. I'll include links in the description below. The third thing you'll need, and this is gonna depend on how many multi-viewers you wanna use this technique on, is an HDMI to HDSDI converter, one for each multi-viewer. Now I will also say that this is going to burn inputs of your switcher, specifically one for each multi-viewer. So if you're hurting for inputs or you don't have any to spare, this will not work for you. And then of course you'll need the appropriate amount of HDMI and HDSDI cables, based on the amount of multi-viewers you plan on wiring. All right, so now that we know what the prerequisites are, let's go ahead and diagram this all out. All right, so looking at these diagrams, I tried to put together every possible scenario I could think of. Under the graphite configuration here, you're gonna see four possible outcomes. And uh, the one we're gonna be focusing on today is gonna be this one here, a single multi-viewer and no external gear. Uh, so essentially the graphics card in the graphite unit is going to output its HDMI feed and we're going to loop it back into the graphite card uh, into its HDMI input. And try not to think too much right now about what's happening on the software side. We're going to cover that next and this will all make sense at that point. But uh, at that point we'll take the HDMI out of the graphite card and that is going to supply our multi-viewer with our audio meters attached. So the other possible way to do this is going to be a uh, single or duo multi-viewer using external gear. Uh, so same concept is we're going to take from the graphics card the HDMI output and because the graphics card only has one HDMI output, the other ones are DisplayPort, you are probably going to want to get a DisplayPort 2 HDMI cable or somehow adapt that into uh, HDMI because we're going to run it into the HDMI to HDSDI converters. And once it hits that, it's going to then loop back into the graphite card HDSDI in. And as you can see, the process is the same whether you use one multi-viewer, a single multi-viewer, or a duo multi-viewer configuration. Uh, and then over here, we would then take both multi-viewers out of the HDMI of the graphite card. Now, the other possible solution is a hybrid method of both of these using no external gear for the first multi-viewer, but external gear for the second multi-viewer. And that's what this is gonna be. So this is just a combination of both of these. You can see the first uh, multi-viewer is same thing, HDMI, right out of the graphics card, right back into the graphite card. And then the second one is running through an HDMI to HDSDI converter and then coming in SDI, and then both multi-viewers are coming out HDMI. 
Now there is a bit of a caveat here when you're running in 1080p, and this will make sense uh, in a little bit. We'll come back to this after we talk about the software side of things. So over here on the Carbonite Ultra side, you can see it is a little bit different because we have to supply our own computer, again, whether it's Windows, Mac, or Linux, running dashboard, uh, because this is not built in like the Graphite is. So uh, essentially we would take both of our HDMI outs, go into HDMI to HDSCI converters, and then run them into the Carbonite Ultra just over regular SDI. Now two little things you need to keep in mind here is the Carbonite Ultra does have up to four multi-viewers, but this technique that we're gonna be looking at can only be done on two of them. Those two are the video processing multi-viewers. Uh, the other two multi-viewers that the Carbonite Ultra can do are just input and output based. So we're only gonna be able to use the video processing multi-viewers. And with that in mind, if you plan on using this technique for a second multi-viewer, the second video multi-viewer is a paid license. But after the processing is done, then we're just going to take the multi-viewers out standard SDI and then run them to our monitors and uh, if we have to convert them to HDMI to fit those monitors then that'll be done down the line. All right so let's start talking about what all is going to be involved on the software side of this. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to make sure that you have is dashboard and this can be downloaded off of Ross Video's website. You just need to go to support and software downloads and it will take you here and you will go down to the dashboard control. And then just make sure that you download according to the operating system that you're currently on. So I would download for Windows, so we would just click on this and it's going to start the download. Now I already have this downloaded and I already have the uh, most recent version installed, but if you don't, you can just go ahead and uh, once it's done downloading, go through the installation steps and uh, it will ultimately end up here on your desktop. So what we're gonna do is we'll go ahead and we will open this up. Now the reason I say that this should work out of the box with Graphite, another reason I should say is because dashboard should come already pre-installed on your Graphite machine. But uh, you will probably want to make sure that it's still the latest version. So uh, you'll definitely want to go onto the website and check your current version with the latest version. It's just good practice. So when this opens up, uh, and if this is your first time opening this up, typically what you'll see is on the right, a uh, giant blank canvas. And on the left, you're going to see your basic tree view and your file navigation. Please forgive my uh, weirdly sized text throughout here. Um, I'm recording in UHD, so I have to uh, upscale uh, through Windows so that everything's not really tiny pixelated with, uh, with Dashboard. So uh, again, first time opening this up, if you are on a computer that is connected to the same network that your Graphite or Carbonite Ultra is, then Dashboard should be able to reach out and see it and add it to the basic tree view here. Now, uh, let's say this wasn't here. You could always try to manually uh, add this. So what I'll do is I will go ahead and remove this from my tree. And with the little plus sign up here, if we click on this and go to TCP IP dashboard connect, we can try to manually add this. So what we're gonna do is type in the IP address of the frame. In my case, it's gonna be 192.168.1.3. And we'll go to detect frame information and it should be able to reach out and find it. If it doesn't, then you might have an, another network issue. You might need to uh, look into maybe some sort of a port blocking or something like that. You would wanna make sure that uh, 5253 is open on your firewall. So we'll go finish and it's going to add it here. Now, the second thing that we're gonna to have to do is make sure that we have our own custom panel file. Now, I would love to go into excruciating detail with you on all the different things you can do with a custom dashboard panel. Uh, but unfortunately, we don't have that kind of time. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, focus in on the parts of this and the elements to create our uh, audio meters within our multi-viewer. 
And uh, if you guys want, maybe in the future we can do some more dashboard tutorials later. So when we go to create our new panel file, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to file and we're going to go new and we're going to go panel file. We're gonna click on this and it's going to ask you where you wanna save it. So we're going to save ours to my custom panel file and we're going to rename this panel file graphite MV AU meters. And then it's gonna ask you if you wanna start with a template. My recommendation is always just start with a blank self-contained data source panel with uh, expression. It has all the bells and whistles you'll ever need. Um, otherwise, if there's something that is more specific to what you need to do, you can always do it down here with your other templates. So we'll go ahead and go finish and it's going to create that and it's going to open it up on the right hand side in a tab. Uh, you'll also see in my file navigation because I had a little check mark box to add it to my uh, navigation pane that is now down here. So if I do close this, I can reopen it quickly right here through my file navigation. So in order to do this, we are actually gonna take advantage of one of Dashboard's most primitive features, and that is copying panel elements from one panel to another. And the reason it's important that you are connected to either your Graphite or your Carbonate Ultra is because we're going to need that live feedback from those devices. So if I open up my Graphite on the left-hand side here and go to my audio mixer, and double click on it, it's going to open it up here on the right, which is gonna give me access into the Rave audio engine. And of course, I will see some faders and uh, my mains and my monitor over here. And these are live VU meters right now. So you can see I can increase and decrease coming from this particular source, and it is going to reflect that. So, like I said, we are actually going to copy some elements from this panel over to our panel. Easiest way to do that is to click and drag this tab over to the right hand side uh, until you see the red outline show on the right and then release and it's going to split our view. So we have my custom panel on the left and we have the audio mixer from the graphite on the right. So. On the custom panel, what we're gonna to need to do is get this into edit mode. And there's two ways we can do that. We can click on the panel builder edit mode button up here, or we can also press control G. I'm not sure what the shortcut is on the uh, uh, on Mac, probably Apple G as well. So we're gonna do that and it's gonna take us into the grid view. Uh, control G, control grid, that's how I remember it anyways. And what's gonna happen is we're also gonna come over here to this pre-manufactured uh, panel from Ross and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go into panel edit mode. And this, again, is one of the most simplistic things you can do with a custom panel. But we can steal one of these uh, faders, one of these elements, by dragging it over into our own custom panel. And it's going to drop it there and this is still live so if I come over here and do control G to get out of edit and I change these you can see it's also going to reflect on my custom panel so this is a live connection back to this software so this is ultimately where we're going to be going with this um, and we're going to be modifying this uh, panel element to just show the meters but before we do that what we're gonna do is I'm going to delete this element and I'm actually going to double click on my custom panel here and it's going to, uh, on the tab, and it's gonna make this full screen. Because what I did is I actually uh, took a screenshot of my multi-viewer and I'm gonna use that as a background here temporarily so I can help line these VU meters up as I drag them over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to double click on the background here, and it's gonna open up the edit component window. And this is going to be the attributes for the entire panel because I clicked here on the, uh, the base. So I'm gonna go over to the style, and you're gonna see in here a spot for the background URL. So if I go to browse, I will be able to locate a file. 
And here is my screenshot of my multi viewer. So I'm going to click open and I'm going to go apply and close. And it's going to make that my background. So another important thing at this point in time is we are also going to right click now and we're going to go lock all proportions. And what this is going to do is as our uh, panel grows or shrinks, so for example, if we do this, it's going to resize all the proportions of all of our elements, which will help when we are moving this between different devices or monitors. So now it becomes really easy. What we'll do is we will double click on our tab again to uh, unsplit this. And then let's say I want to have my main uh, levels here on my program. So we'll go back, we'll put this into panel edit mode and we will drag our main over into here. So if I double click on this again, we're going to see this expand. And then what we can do is we can actually go into this element. So if we double click on it, it's going to open up the edit component window again. And you're gonna see some things in here. For instance, this is actually a mix master widget uh, native to the dashboard software. So if I come over here to source, it's going to show me essentially all of the predetermined parameters that this uh, element has. And if I pull this up here, we can actually see it in the edit component window as well. So each one of these little elements make up this element as a whole. And really the only ones that we are concerned about are going to be uh, level scale. So we can go in and we can get rid of everything in here except for the left level scale and the right level scale. And that includes the right level and the left level. And also, if you want to uh, hold on to these little peak icons here, you'll also want to keep right peak and left peak. So aside from that, we can take the rest of these out so that it's just left level scale, right level scale, and again, as your uh, preference, whether or not you keep the peaks in. So if we just go apply changes, you're gonna see this update now to just show the levels and uh, the peak indicators. So we can go ahead and close this. And now what we can do is we can actually resize. So with the resize option selected over here, we can drag the edge here to the size that we want it to be. Oh, and another pro tip is uh, to make this easier on ourselves and to make everything conform is if we right click on the background again, we can go snap to grid. And with snap to grid enabled, when we go to maneuver this, it will actually stay within the uh, confines of the actual boxes of the grid. So I'm going to now take this and scale it to my heart's content and then drag it over here to my program box. And just like that, I now have a audio meter where my program is gonna be. So essentially, let's say we want to now do uh, camera one's embedded audio. So we could go back into here and let's say audio one, this fader is going to be set to my uh, embedded audio. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to drag this over here, double click on this, open audio one up, and you're gonna see it's a mixed channel uh, fader. I'm gonna switch it over to a mix master element. And if I hit apply changes, you'll see why, because it'll actually rebuild it in the same way as the uh, other, uh, the mains were, which is just easier in my opinion to take out the, uh, the VU meter that we need. So again, we'll go into source and we'll go through and we'll get rid of everything except for right peak and left peak and also the uh, left level scale and right level scale. And we will go apply and close. And then same concept is we'll make sure that we have resize selected and we will drag this in and we will also scale it down to wherever we need to be to be happy with it. All right, so I've gone through and I've just added um, some more meters to some of my uh, other windows here. Uh, again, 
the same process for each and every one of those. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go in and I'm going to remove the background. So I'm going to double click in the back again and we're gonna go into our style and we are going to remove our background URL here. And we're gonna go apply and close, which is just going to leave the meters. So I'm going to come up here and go file save and I'm going to uh, go out of edit mode and this is what's gonna be left. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this custom panel file and I'm going to load it onto the actual graphite machine. All right, so we are over here on the graphite machine now and uh, you'll have to excuse the uh, difference in audio quality. We have moved rooms and uh, I have the racks right behind me. So uh, you will probably hear the low drone of the fan as we go through this. But in any case, what we're gonna to wanna to make sure first is our Windows uh, outputs are set up correctly. So we'll just go into our display settings and uh, we will see that uh, these are duplicated. We actually want them to be extended. So we'll come down here to multiple displays and we'll go extend and that's correct now. So the primary, the one that I'm currently on and then my secondary, which is again coming out of my graphics card and looping back into the HDMI input of my graphite as a source now. So that is important again, if you kind of want to do this out of the box uh, solution. In addition, we've also transferred our custom panel file from my uh, office computer over here to the actual graphite machine. So if I open this up, we are going to see our VU meters and everything. So what we're gonna do now is I'm actually going to take this dashboard and drag it over to my second screen and then press Shift F11 to make it full screen. Which brings me to the very next part of this is we need to make a quick change in our multi-viewer configuration. So in dashboard, we will go into our graphites configuration and we will see our multi-viewers here. So we'll go into there and my first multi-viewer, which is the one we're gonna be using, the feature that we are gonna be actually toying with is gonna be overlay. And the purpose of the overlay function is to take a source that is coming into your graphite and or slash carbonite ultra and the system will actually do a luminance key of that source over top of the multi-viewer as part of the output. So we'll go into the overlay and we can turn that on. And then on the right, you're gonna see all the sources that you can key over your multi-viewer. Uh, for me, I'm gonna set it to HDMI because again, that's my input coming in. And then on the left-hand side, we're gonna see the clip. So right now on the multi-viewer, you should see uh, just the multi-viewer. But if we bring the clip all the way down to zero, you should see just my dashboard uh, input on HDMI. So you would essentially adjust the clip to where you would be satisfied for seeing this. Uh, in my own experimentations, I've found that about 21 for the value, which you'll see it sets it to 20.92, is uh, right about where you wanna be. But just like that, you can see now that you have your audio meters live over top of your multi-viewer output. And we can prove that by going into the audio mixer. And if I adjust my levels here, we're gonna see those bounce on my multi-viewer as well. All right, so this is where I wanna come back to that little caveat I mentioned earlier. If you plan on using your graphite in 1080p, you are going to need to do a slightly different setup. And the reason being is even though your graphite is running in 1080p, the multi-viewers are still output and interlaced. So the little keying trick that the graphite does internally on the multi-viewers using the overlay function we just talked about will not work. So we need to introduce another device in order to perform that Luma key for us. And uh, it doesn't have to be what I'm about to show you, but it really works well in this ecosystem. Uh, the Carbonite Solo 1RU frame can be added into the mix to do that external key. So in this situation, we would take the same thing out of the graphics card, the HDMI output and the DisplayPort output, get it to HDMI, feed it into the two inputs of the Carbonite Solo. You could then use the two mini MEs in the Carbonite Solo to do the Luma key in order to get dashboard overlaid on top of the multi-viewers. And then if you needed them to be HDMI, you could run them back into the graphite in SDI 
and then output them in HDMI. If you don't need them to be HDMI, then you could just take the SDI outputs of the Carbonite Solo and run them to your monitor. And I suppose it is worth mentioning that uh, this little caveat doesn't exist on the Carbonite Ultra because when the Carbonite Ultra is running in 1080p, its multiviewers are also running in 1080p. So no real issues there. And that'll about wrap it up for today's video. If you found it useful, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, on the note of subscriptions, we just actually passed 500 as of the time of recording this video. So thank you all for that. I really do appreciate it. It really means so much to me knowing that you guys are out there watching these videos and really gives me motivation to put out more content. So if you're out there and you do find this information useful, please subscribe. Let me know that you're out there and let me know that you are enjoying this content. With that being said, we'll catch you right here next time on Broadcast Buddy TV.